Sighted in my rifle and she sure is shooting straight But I'll meet up with the jitter jaw It's opening day I've been working all summer and it's sure been hot the Tractor tore up but I planted my plot Deer trail running through there looks like a highway Hey guys, the outdoors is great. I promised a face reveal and I'm promising to show my hunting gear right here and I'm, uh, I'm doing a gear pack uh, review of what I'm going to bring in to the woods uh, for turkey season. Uh, turkey is very hard to go ahead and hunt with a bow and so I'm going to go over the stuff that I take into the woods. First off, we got my hunting pack right here. Sorry if you can hear my mom in the background. Uh, but anyways, uh, we've got... Um, this, I'm not sure what this is called, but I know this goes on my belt loop to hold my calls. And I've got a little fanny pack like thing so that when um, sitting, it's got the best part about this is it's got a little uh, patch on the back where I can sit down on when I'm sitting on the ground and stuff. And I like to go ahead and keep my favorite call in here. Let me grab it out. And my favorite, my favorite part about this call is it's got a, the autism sign in the middle of it. So, and it's a friction call, meaning that when you, here, well, let me grab one of my strikers and I'll show you. This is the striker that came with it. You can get this at jagcalls.com and it's an autism call. But anyways, it mainly simply when you go ahead and if you can hear that, it uh, basically produces uh, friction, which basically makes the sound. But anyways, so let me go ahead and put that back. Well, actually, I'm just going to put it right here for right now. It's not wanting to fit. And I've got every hunter needs a hat and fit. And for a turkey, you generally want a face mask so that you can blend in your outlines. This one hat right here comes with a face mask but I don't 100% recommend it for those because my face mask on this uh, shows some white and so that's why I wear a backup one with me on my face when I'm hunting. Then I've got some hand warmers right here. Basically, I was just wearing on my hip and then I put my hands in it and when I'm getting cold, I just put my hands in it and it warms up. Then I've got a few water bottles right here and I carry like one or two of these in the woods just to keep water in with me. Then we've got my mechanical release. I'm not sure what this is called, but I know it's a true ball. Um, and my favorite part about this release is I, my old release didn't have was it, this automatic closing mechanism. Sometimes when uh, you're deer hunting or turkey hunting, it's great to know that you've got this on. So in case you forget, just in case you forget. So then um, I usually pack... Uh, a my friend uh who actually served in the military gave me this it's a military canteen and i'm not sure how much ounces of water this holds but i know it clips onto your belt and when i'm thirsty i just open that up and there should be there's usually water in it but right now with it being the off season it's not i carry this uh little peanut butter jar just in case I, you know i need to use the restroom and then i carry this also just in case i need the restroom this is uh anti-scent um, wipes when I need to use the restroom for deer season. The scent is usually what causes most of my failures in hunting. And then I've got my sunglasses so that when I'm hunting, if I'm generally looking in the direction of the sun, that I don't have to worry about losing my eyesight. Like I said, another water bottle for water. I carried, like I said, three or two to three. My binos right here help me out a lot. Uh, when there's game in the far distance, I can just easily look through this, and I picked this up at Academy for like, I'm not sure, $29.99 I want to say, but anyways, and then I've got some snacks in here, I carry a lot of pistachios on me, because pistachios are my favorite non scented snack, well it's got scent, but either way, then I also carry this, I'm not sure why I carry this on me, but it's a kite thing with uh, some fishing line on it. 
then when really when you're generally turkey on a rangefinder is what you mainly need so that if you so that if you're not for certain when you've got the 20 yard shot you can just easily just click a button and it tells you immediately and then i've also got um a flashlight so when i'm at night when i'm heading out or trying to retrieve some game i can easily just turn this on and of course it's dead right now but when I turn this on, it goes ahead and helps me out. And then I've got another flashlight. I believe this one's dead too, yeah. And then I've got my a little bow wax and then a little clip thing. I'm not sure what these are called. Uh, but anyways, I keep these on, in me, ju on me just in case I need it. Then I've got my wind down, dead down wind. It even tells me where the wind's heading. So let's say I was spraying it right now and the wind was going that way, it would tell me where my scent's going. And scent's a key factor in hunting. Then I keep a few disposable rubber gloves on me just in case I do get something. Cleaning up game gets messy sometimes. I keep um, also some trail mix in my bag. And then for, that's it for most of my stuff. Now, for in the mornings, this is an owl locator call. Basically, what happens is when when you blow into this, this will produce a cow noise. I'm not sure the science behind it, but basically, you just it, usually on the box it says as random stuff that you need to say when you're blowing into it. For me, it's who cooks, who cooks for you, you know the classic saying. And but I'm not going to demonstrate it because the neighborhood doesn't like me demonstrating in the neighborhood. But anyways, I keep thing of sandpaper on it just in case my friction call ends up going ahead and getting dull when friction calls when they generally get um oil on it you just basically rub this on it and it scratches up this call which is what helps produce it the noise got another striker in here for my other slate call and then, of course, I'm pretty sure by now, most of you have heard the old box call. This is uh, the box call turkey call by Quaker Boy. I got this last year for my birthday. I'm not sure how much my hunting partner got it for, but... And then, of course, I carry a thing of chalk on me. Just in, This is classic children's chalk, just in case my... As you can see on the white right here, that's the chalk. And that's what helps make the call, a friction call. And then here, let me try to find, I know I've got a few diaphragm calls. Ah, my two zinc diaphragm calls. Back in then, when I was starting, I was a huge fanboy, and I only went to zinc. But now, um, I promise I'm just, I'm do whatever I can. Um, and then I keep a micro SD card on me, just in case, let's say, for example, I've got a camera right on my bow but i'll show you that later that i the micro sd card goes into but anyways and then that's all for my calls i'll just put the stuff right here for right now and now for the bow this is my gen x accelerate well i should really call it matthew's accelerate because they don't sell the gen x accelerate anymore this is a 2017 model i don't know what this hip this quiver right here is called but i, I know it's my trophy ridge and I picked this up for like 30 bucks market retailer price. And the this dropaway rest right here was given to me for free by a friend. So as a site, I majorly need to get a new one. But anyways, and then the D-loop right here was pre-installed, which is my favorite part about it, was when it came with it. That allowed me to put my character list on. I won't show you right now, because at the range is usually when I shoot. But anyways, and now we're going, like I said, we're going into the bow section. Now, a few days ago, I made a bet with a friend, and I lost miserably. I was supposed to get 100 likes on a con on a post, and I am lost. I got 300 likes on it. But I'm going to have to go traditional this year, and so this is my traditional bow setup. It's a Matt, not Matthew, sorry. It's a Martin Jaguar, and it's a really, really good bow. I really like it. I picked this up for like 145 at my local retailer price. Yet again, it was on consignment. But I'm more of a bare bow shooter, so I've got my quiver attachment here for the same quiver that's on my compound. And these are the limbs right here. I'm a bare bow shooter. That means I shoot with the limbs and riser bare. No sight whatsoever. No stabilizer, as you can see here. There's no stabilizer, no sight. 
And now for my um, bow, I, recurve bow, I want to go ahead and shoot these uh, um, gold tip warriors, I want to say these are. Yeah, yeah, these are gold tip warrior arrows. And I picked them up at Lancaster Archery for like five bucks. Um, now let's go ahead and get into my compound arrows when I'm shooting with my compound bow. Generally, when you're shooting with compound, you want more heavier arrows for this more of a speed. So everything flies away. Sorry, my friend is helping me record this video, but anyways. Just now, trying to make sure nothing flies away on him. Yeah, but anyways, this is my brother's, uh, right here, this stuff is my brother's. This is release aid and arm guard. Actually, this year, I'm taking him for his first uh, turkey hunt this year. This is my arm guard. I picked this up at Academy for like 17 bucks, I want to say. And it's really, really efficient. It helps me out. But anyways, the arrows that I use for my compound are the Victory Arrows Archer's Edge, which is a 400 grain arrow. It really is a really, flies really true when I need it. I'm not a true fanboy of the Victory Arrows. I shoot whatever I can get my hands on. And whatever I can get my hands on, usually in archery, you don't really want to go towards the cheap Walmart arrows and stuff. You don't want to risk breaking them when you're hitting game animal and stuff. And it's... But anyways... Oh, sorry. We've got a FedEx truck coming right behind us. Um, we'll let that pass. Um, but anyways, so let's go ahead and get onto my broadheads. I've got my broadheads right here. Um, these are, I'm, not, I'm gonna try to carefully open them because I don't have the little plastic piece that keeps them together. But um, these are the are the G5, I wanna say Montags. Uh oh, did a piece fall? Thank you. These are the G5 Montags, I wanna say. And they really are really good in broadheads for me. I picked them up at Academy for like, I want to say around 35 bucks. I'm sorry, I, I don't have the receipt with me on anything, so I can't really give you an estimated price. And then here is my second broad of the box for when I'm more of a fixed blade bull fan. There's a difference between fixed blades and broadheads and mechanical broadheads. Mechanical broadheads have extendable blades, and I'm more, I lean more towards fixed blades so that I can go ahead. I can assure that shot, my, uh, from what I've heard, there's a chance that mechanicals can fail, which I'm not advising against them. I'm just saying, I'm putting it out there so in case you guys think about it, there's a chance. But these are my broadheads, the, red, the green ones are my brothers. And anyways, and here's a battery from a marine shot, I'll keep it in my thing just in case I need it. And then... Nice. And then these big broadheads, the, there's a difference between broadheads and sizes. This is 125 grain. These right here are 100 grains. Now the grain inch, depending on, it equals weight. And traditional archery, you want more weight for, because recurve bows don't have the cams, which a uh, compound bow does. And the compound bow is a lot more faster. And so that's why you generally want these bigger broadheads. And I'm not advising if you're using compound, I'm not advising against it, but I prefer the old 100 grain tips just because then I can easily set my bow in. And so, I got caught. <laughs> well, thank you for joining the Outdoors is Great. As usual, subscribe, hit the like button, and make sure that notification button's on. And see you guys later.